Hello, you fucks. Welcome to John Solo's Chillin' Beard Brigade. I'm John Solo. This is Lisa Gramlin playing all your Hi. hits. Hi. Lisa, how are you? <laughs> uh, I'm good. Yeah, so Lisa Gramling is now a Paul Rent. Congratulations. It's freaking awesome. So tell yeah, me all about cute. it. Yeah, tell me what's the, what's the name? What's the breed? How the, how this happened? Do you hurt in your gut now because of the labor? Tell me all about it. Okay. <laughs> No, um, we were going to get like a little puppy from uh, somebody that my mother had talked to, but we didn't have the money for that. So Toki went online yesterday and I guess found this humane society close by and called them to see if they had any small dogs. And I, they said they did. <laughs> we went up there and they weren't that small. Um, She's about the size of a beagle. That's a, uh, her that's name is Lola. Pretty small. I don't know, pretty <laughs> compared to mine, anyways. But yeah, I get it. Lola, yeah. huh? So Lola. Is that that's you, the name she came with. So Lola, and she's about nine L, years old. Wait, L O L A Lola. Is that yeah. it? Yes. Like like the Kinks. Like yeah, met her in a club down in North Soho. Where oh, was that who sings that? I would Trying to figure that one out for the past couple, the uh, past couple hours. Yeah, it means that uh, perhaps Lola is a crossdresser. That's what that means. But that's I all don't right. think this dog is, but okay. Could be. But yeah, know. she's nine years old. Um, her previous owners pretty much surrendered her after four years of having her because they had a baby. Yeah, you were mentioning that and. <sighs> I got I got words for any pet owner that does that shit. Okay, you should burn in hell. That's my own personal opinion yeah. on that matter. I don't I even agree. believe in hell, but if there was, you'd burn in it. Once you mm. you you have a dog, a dog is also a child. That's all. There, it's it's. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's the way it works. Once you take on that responsibility, you take it on for fucking life. It's not like you can just get rid of the kid. Although, if I were to choose between the two, I'd get rid of the child and not the dog. Um, a child, <laughs> I wouldn't even yeah. have the child to begin with. But yeah, 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 that's I get it. that's. I'm sorry, I'm very opinionated with this. I really love animals, and my my dogs are the world to me. So, um, and she's yeah. really not that much of a handful. I mean, she is. She's so sweet. She yeah. took to us like a duck to water, pretty much, and she just she lets us know when she needs to go outside. <laughs> She'll like kind of huff and bark at you. Well, to see, that's that's a well trained dog. Maybe I was being too harsh. Maybe burn in hell's wrong. I be, be close oh, no, enough. You were, yeah, you were yeah. all right on. It's how I feel. I'm sorry. It's it's, it's how I feel. But, oh, no, yeah. don't apologize for that. That's yeah. how I felt. Yeah, it's kind of kind of wrong in my opinion. We've only, I have had one situation once where, uh, <laughs> unfortunately, a, a, a dog that we had bit someone and that was that was a bad deal all the way around um and that was a tough decision to make by far but that was a uh, the dog was also 180 pounds it was a very large dog and that was that was a problem that um, would probably scare me to death but that was a problem but yeah anyways. yeah going to the going to the humanitarian uh, humane society i want to call it humanitarian but that's not here that's in florida um <sighs> yeah but with all the dogs barking kind of got my nerves riled up a little uh -huh. and mom's like it's okay they're in cages <laughs> oh like, yeah i know but it's a big dog bark and i just can't i can't do that well i remember i still you, freak out over that you were attacked by a dog that ordered a pizza was that correct <laughs> the, he didn't order one no but their owners did and yeah my hand got bitten several places. Yeah. Uh, uh, you should have just given him the pizza. That's what you should have done. I mean, that's all the dog wanted was a pizza. I, it's my no, opinion. No, the dog got spooked because a very loud speeding motorcycle passed by the house. Mm. He was in the garage. He was, and he just saw me and went full attack mode. So, yeah, got my hand in several places, but. Yeah, I get I'm it. now afraid of. I'm kind of leery around big dogs. Yeah, it was a would... pit bull boxer mix that got me. But yeah, 
Yeah, I'm very familiar with that, with both breeds and that mixed breed, and too. I've I've seen my my son and uh, and his fiance. They they have a uh, uh, two um, pit bull boxer mixes, um, Ghost and Athena, and they are they are just a they are a handful to say they're they're very active dogs, we shall say. But anyways, I I know that we've got a bunch of audiobooks this week. I appreciate you telling yeah, me about the yeah. And there's a theme the, with the Lola. first three. You'll find you'll see it. Okay. Well, we can get into that. Let's uh <laughs> let me see if my buttons work this week. I'm going to push my button. Here we go. And tell me about Not wait, no, the first no. one. There we go. Cool. There's I think I got one. it right. All right. Tell me all about it. Uh it's Ambrose. It's book 5 of the the Terrio family by Sylvia Violet and narrated by Michael Dean. All right. That one came out on the 24th. Um, and it looks like we've got this one next. Yes. Thor, Norse Lords MC Book One by M.D. Gregory and narrated by Caden Lukakis. You said cock. And uh, then we <laughs> had. Mm, is that it? No, that. Oh, okay. Yep, that's After the one. After Felix. In order. Okay. <laughs> After Felix, Close Proximity Book Three by Lily Morton and narrated by Joel Leslie. That one also came out on the 24th. Then we had... Primal, Wrong Side of the Tracks, book two, by K. A. Merkin. 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 I, like how you, I like how you say that. Cool. So what's the, by what, Wyatt Baker. what's the theme we got going on here? All Nordic? What? Because uh, this one came up next here. Well, no, like I thought the... I didn't know after Felix was in the first three, but the first three kind of was showing off. Ha! Ha! <laughs> I, I wouldn't go there, but I think that's hilarious to me. Um, well, that's I saw that, and I'm like, yeah, John's going to say something about those. I was trying to be nice. Uh, the, the the Dragon's King Heart was the uh, High Garden Dragons book one by C.K. Noel or Noel. We don't know. That one's from Aaron Ross, and that came out on the 25th. Um, then we had... Then we had uh, Prince of Blades. Book and that's book one by Kay Thatcher, narrated by Alan Turton. Tur Turton. Tur I apologize. Words Tur are hard, and yep. so are names. <laughs> that one came out on the twenty fifth. Then we had. Oh, this one is our. Now you did this this week, right? You went. I I yes, gave I up did. on. Yeah, I gave up on going out and getting narrators to to read a, a sample once a week for us because I'm lazy. It's not that every narrator I talk to is just more than giving. It's a wonderful industry. We're working with a lot of wonderful people, but I was just I was lazy. It took some time and I didn't do it. So Alyssa was like, "Well, I'll do it," which is perfect. So here we go. Uh, this is an Iron Fist, and we've got the little Zachary Johnson's going to read us this. A cluster of chrysanthemums. Hi, this is Zachary Johnson, narrator of An Iron Fist. Might and magic, fist and flame, to send evil back from where it came. Jackson Pride and Xander Wright delve into the mountain halls of the Dverger, the dwarven people of Norse myth known for their mining and metalwork. Seeking jewels and ore, they make a deadly discovery instead. A cluster of chrysanthemists. How did they grow underground? Where are they from? And who sent them? The masters of the Black Market's guilds grudgingly unite to stop the fatal flowers at their source. But digging deeper only reveals another conundrum. A legendary gemstone known as the Heart of Oberon. The Fae haven't walked the earth in forever. Why has the heart resurfaced now? And why is the gemstone whispering? An Iron Fist is a 70,000-word MM urban fantasy romance with an HFN ending. Join a fast-talking artificer and a snarky sorcerer, childhood friends who became bitter enemies, then lovers, as they explore a world filled with strange flora, mythical fauna, and magical murders. If you like your urban fantasy with humor, horror, and a whole lot of heart, you've come to the right place. Experience an Iron Fist today. Now I liked everything about that except the experience and iron fist today, because <laughs> I mean, you know, just just no, like no, <laughs> no, I don't think that's what they mean. I don't think that's what he means. I mean, I that's that just it sounded a little a little like that to me, but I don't. Yeah. Um, anyways, um, that one also came out. It looks like on the twenty fifth. Then we had. Then we had the shout out. 
by Dana Roman. Yeah, I think we pronounce that. Alex. I think I think we pronounce that shut out is how we pronounce that. I think uh, it's not a what shout, I out. shout out. You said yeah, oh you were like goodness. hey, you said shout out. <laughs> <said> shut out. But... <laughs> okay, shut out. Yeah, narrated by Alexander Cindy and Iggy Toma. Excellent. That one came out on the twenty eighth. Then we had. Uh, then we had Betrayal, Fire and Brimstone Scrolls Book 4 by Nicole Knight, narrated by Kurt Grace. Excellent. That one, uh, the, also 28th on the 28th was a big yeah, day. Yeah, it looks like it. Uh, then we had this one. Elven Duty by Reese Lawless, narrated by John York. And I'm just going to give a blanket statement of the 28th for a while here. Then we had... His Boy to Cherish, Naughty or Nice, Season 2, by Colette David Davison, narrated by Piers Ryman. Moving on, we had... Oh, no, the 29th was a big day, not the 28th. Oh, 29th, anyway. all right. Going Public, uh, Jane, Jade Harbor, Capital Book 2, by Hudson Lynn, narrated by Tyler Testuda. Now, that's a new author to me and a new narrator to me and the cover mm -hmm. kind of sticks out as well so that must be from a uh, it's from recorded books which is a division of tantor or tantor is a division of recorded books i believe is the way it works but anyways right. that's yeah, that's kind of a new look tantor to and just came out with a whole bunch yeah they they typically do their releases I've seen them do a, like a, a, a two month bundle before or twice a month bundle before where they'll do like the 15th and the 30th, that sort of thing. I've seen them do that. I've also seen them do like once a week kind of dump, but it kind of goes into the back end of how Tantor drops these in. They don't go through ACX. They go through a larger company that then uses ACX just to distribute to, well, not ACX. They just go straight to Audible. So the way yeah. they do these with their pre releases, because they do pre releases, they'll do a plan of, we're going to release all of these books on, let's say, April 1st. So they have them in production yeah. in January and February. Then they have to get them out to the distributor and all that. We've just gone through this recently with Hedonist, uh, me and Ro Horvat. Um, we just got the notification uh, overnight that Hedonist is finally through their QC process, which is ridiculous. It normally takes, I don't know two days for me in ACX, but it's taken almost a month for Hedonist. Now though, in a few days, we should see it out with, with the distributor with a, uh, with like audible and, and, and all that fun stuff, but Yay. it took that long. So Tantor <laughs> is smart. They know this and because they're not using ACX directly, they're going, they're just distributing straight to audible and all those people. <clears throat> they plan these releases out like a month or two in advance. And they just do one large drop and another large drop like that that you'll see. So, Anyways, that's a little bit of the back end and explanation of why we see things like this. Sorry, I digress. Next, we had... The Necromancer's Light, Radiance Book 1 by Talia Clark, narrated by Kai Rubio. Oh, Rubio. Then we had... Then we had Tied to Trouble, The Gamer's Book 3 by Megan Erickson. Narrated by Desiree Ketchum. Ketchum, if you can. That one also, 29th release. Then we had... Criminal Intentions, Season 1, Episode 2, Junk Shop Blues, by Cole McCade. Narrated by Kurt Bonham. Yeah, I've heard that Kurt name Bonham. before. Kurt? Yeah. Um, yeah. Is he on Discord? Yeah, he's on Discord. And I, I'm not... I've actually... Uh, we've actually done... He has a couple different pseudonyms, um, and I've actually done uh, at least one book with him through Tantor, maybe more. Um, that being said, he's not like a close friend of mine, but he's certainly uh, an acquaintance of mine. I like him a lot. He's a good narrator, too. He's real solid. Um, but, yeah, we should have him on Talk to the Beard at some point. I don't think that we've done that yet. Um, well, I don't think so either. Yeah. yeah. Next, we had... Whatever It Takes, Code Honor Book 5 by Reese Knightley, narrated by Troy Duran. Nice. Then we had The Three Hearts Equation, College Boys of New Haven, Book Two by Hayden Hall, narrated by Cooper North. And continuing on on the 29th, we had Dear Mr. Brody, For Him, Book Three by A.M. Johnson, narrated by Kirk Graves and Tim Page. 
Looks like Tim was busy on this day as well because he also had this. Oh, he was very busy because he had several others too. Uh, we got Wrath, an enemy lover's MM Sports Romance standalone by Ella James, narrated by Iggy Toma and Tim Page. Yeah, then we had Got Me Wishing, Vet Shop Boys Book Two by Casey Cox and narrated by John Solo. That's me. Then we had Yeah. A Nothing Special New Year by A.E. Via, narrated by Aiden Snow. And then, keeping on on the 29th, we had... Daddy's Boy, the Arizona series book two by Romeo Priminger, I guess. I apologize for that if it's wrong. And narrated by Gabriel Michael. And continuing on... We got Wake the Dead. Godstone Saga Book 3 by Jocelyn Drake, narrated by Kale Williams. And finally, we get into the 30th. Freezing Aversion. Cons consort Consortium. Mm -hmm. There we go. Book 2 by B.L. Maxwell, narrated by Alan Jeffries. And I believe that's it for the new releases. That was a hell of a lot of new releases going on there. Yeah, um, there's 26 in all. Uh, and it looks like you were busy listening to stuff as well. Here. Oh, yeah, I was. Uh, so the first one that you listened to, let's get this one up here. Uh, you will bow down. I gave this one three bullets. It's book four of the Odin Chronicles series, and it picked up where book three left off. I really enjoyed it. I mean... There were a little less sexy times in the previous books, and it was more about who was taking over whose territories. Um, between, I guess, between vampires and werewolves. There's vampires, werewolves, and dragons. Oh my. Uh, yeah, oh my. Um, Nicholas and Matt are still really good, a really good team, and I can't wait for the next one to come out and find out what happens next. That's always a good sign. What's the what's the bullet rating on this one? It was a three. Three? Right there in the middle. That's a good time. Yeah. A three a three bullets, that's a good time. I think that's how we can define that. Uh, <laughs> cool. Uh anything else to say on this one before we move on? Nope. No, nope, right. not really. Cool. Next one coming up here that you listen to. <clears throat> um, Marry Me by Mia Monroe and Kale Williams. This one was a bullet breaker for me. Oh, we got a bullet breaker. Look at that. <laughs> I normally don't go for the fake relationship trope, but I've been wanting to listen to the series since the, the, this one came out. It's, the, of course, the first book in the series, and got to do... I, I got to yell at fictional book characters, and that was a lot of fun. I hadn't done that in a while, and that made me very happy. Um, well, it looks like there's a trend going on here, so I'll ask you, do you have anything else to say about this one, or do you just want to get to the end of this and then kind of talk about the whole series? Say that one more time? Let's move on to this next one real quick, and then we're going to get back to the whole series, because it looks like there's a lot going on here with this series in particular. Am I correct with that? It looks like you, you went through books two, three, through... and four. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. So but I took a break from the first two to listen to this. No, nope, that wasn't oh, it. Oh, wait, no. Well, okay, this one. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> you gave me a challenge to listen to this one. If I so remember I... correctly, that was that was last week, right? Uh where I said uh -huh. somebody's gotta listen to this. All right, so what did you think? Well, um Tracy listened to it first and said it was pretty good, so I Listen to it, it, but I only gave this one bu one bullet. So there, there wasn't a lot of sexy times, or you didn't like the sexy no. times. It well, a little of both. Uh, apparently, this alien scientist named Bain never meant to cause a po an apocalypse of the curdling milk. It was a great milk curdle. That's what they called it. Ropes and ropes of curdled milk, right? <laughs> um, yeah, we'll go with that. And he needed the help of a milkman 
to figure out what went wrong and how to fix it. Okay, this alien was purple, had horns, and, but didn't just, it was the first, it was the author's first MM. It was cute. It was, it had a little bit of, little bit of sex in it, not too much. And the narrator sounded like James Earl Jones at times. I mean, it did keep my interest, and I did like it. It was freaking hilarious, though. There's nothing wrong with James Earl Jones, by the way. Um, he's, no. He's, Darth Vader's got a good voice. Um, but all right. And that's um, what he sounded like at first. So you, you said one bullet going on with this one? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. yeah. But overall, you liked it. It, was just, it wasn't the sexy thing. Yeah, it was cute. But, yeah. Uh, this sounds like a maybe a boyfriend dick to me, you know, like maybe even a little less than that. Like this is the one you come back to occasionally for fun and everything, but this isn't the the monster cock that you dream of. This is the the boyfriend. Anyways, I'm sorry, I'm just trying to make a comparison okay. here. So, alien abduction is like the boyfriend dick. So, um, we next, and we're gonna. I'm just gonna cover all these, okay? If that's all right with you. We got we got okay. fix me, we got free me, and we got catch me. It seems like there's a theme. I'm gonna leave catch me up on the screen, but you tell me about this whole damn series, all right? Well, each individual book has a different bullet rating, though. Oh, all right. So you're gonna be fucking difficult. That's fine. Let me let me pop <laughs> yes, let, I me, am. let me let me pop this over <laughs> here. We're okay. I mean, you know, I got to work today at some point, but that's fine. You go ahead. We're back at fix me. You go and you tell me when to move forward. I'm gonna kick back here. Okay, this one was also a bullet breaker. Um, this one had a daddy boy relationship, and it was so hot once they got to once they got to it. It was a hard fought battle after one night where Casper needed a saint, and he finally they finally talked. I well, I was able to yell. At them too and it was extremely hot and kale doing scottish accent was just amazing all right okay. uh, there, there, so that's that's one <laughs> then i'm going to move on to the next one here uh now we got free me now while you do this one i'll 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 be right back okay so you do your thing <laughs> i'll be right back here uh there there we go you you go okay uh this was a high five bullet rating i truly love this one at well as well it started it was the third book in the series and with tate and nixon a former best friends turn lover trope i did i do like this trope even though i don't listen to it very often I almost gave it a two, even with the Shibari rope play, but the last scene is what bumped up the rating because it was so extremely hot. And again, me and Kale did an excellent job with with this one and Kale's deep raspy timber with Nixon's voice doing dirty talk and growling mine also didn't hurt. And I can't praise this book or the series enough. All right. Oh, look, um, you're back. Yeah. Well, I was, <laughs> I was looking. I was looking for. My plan was when I went off the. I was looking for paper and a pen, but I don't really own papers and pens anymore. I'm all paperless. But I was going to start writing funny notes to hold up. But yeah, I can't do that. So that was my plan. It just didn't work out. Right. Well, maybe you should um, start putting paper and pen in the boot in that. Such why would room. I fucking? I mean, no, we're paperless. <laughs> it, it, just kill trees for. It'd be a good gag though. That's what I was thinking. But yeah. Um, and I, I heard something. And for the love of God. Kale, I love you, dude. I mean, really, we're, we're friends at this point. I really enjoy you, and you're a great narrator. But if I have to hear one more fucking word about your goddamn sexy Scottish goddamn <laughs> accent while I'm working, I'm, dude, all week long, I'm talking to you, Kale, all fucking week long. All I've heard from 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 my assistant, from from fucking Lissa, from everybody there, it's like, Rob, the Kale and the Scottish accent, fuck you. You're too goddamn good for this. Go go narrate somewhere else for a few minutes. <laughs> it's all said in a loving manner. I love you to death, man. And yeah, this is all I've heard. So let's get to the next one. And Mia, you're coming next. But anyways, here we go. All right. Catch me. I gave this one two and a half bullets. 
This one didn't pull me in like the other three did. I normally really enjoy a triad relationship, but I felt like something was missing in this book. I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but it just something was something felt off. I don't know. I couldn't really. Yeah. When you say you couldn't quite put your finger on no, it, no, no, which I understand. No. Well, I mean, have you tried an iron <laughs> fist? Have you no. tried? Have you tried no, like no. something like? I'm just checking. Um, why not try an iron fist today? I'm just suggesting. So anyway, so this one wasn't quite the, wasn't quite as good as the other ones in your opinion. Now, are there more in this series that you were going to move on to at this point? What I'm asking is, yeah, do there's... I have to hear about this fucking series all week, this week coming up here too? Or is this? Yeah. There's two all more right. books left. Great. All right. Awesome. Um, um, but I'm not done. All right. No, <laughs> I, I can see that. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Um, but for me, there were too many sexy times. And usually if it's too much or if it's not done, I guess, correct or right, it just ruins the book for me. I mean, I didn't, it, it didn't make me squirm like the first three did. I kind of fell flat in some places. I mean, it was still a great book. I, I enjoyed it. And me and mm -hmm. Kale, of course, did a great job. And of course, Kale doing a uh, southern accent was very good as well. So and then I could identify with one of the characters. I've, I've, seen, I've seen you have this. Uh, I've seen you have this opinion before, and it always surprises me because what I think of when I think of Liz is bring on the sex, more, more sex. That's normally how you are, but really, it's not so much that you have a, a sex standard, and it's it's. It, it, these didn't if feel as natural. Right, I'll, I'll enjoy it. Right. right, this this didn't feel natural to you. Like it was kind of forced. Is that is that what I'm hearing? Hmm. Like two. Yeah. Just. I mean, first chapter they're already going at it, and it just felt like I didn't get the like catch me, catch me, like the title of the book, like you know the tug and pull of how. Kind of, the characters feel about each other uh -huh. should i do this should i not do this this that and the other the annoying uh like i don't know i can't say this to him i should say this to him but i can't and me yelling at the characters i didn't get a chance to do that in this one gotcha Oh, that makes sense. I just wanted some clarification. And, and uh, as always, as I told you last week, and I, I, I told you off the air, but I'm going to tell you on the air, you actually expressing how you really truly feel about this is absolutely vital and important to what we're doing here. Um, all jokes aside, the Rambling Gremlin is, is, this is not for the authors. This is not for the narrators. This is for people that are reading and listening to these books. Um, and that's where your opinion matters, because a lot of people, um, a, a lot of people actually think just like you do um, in regards to what they're going for in this genre and in these books. Some people don't, and they can see what they might like that you don't like. But the honest opinion Again, this is not for narrators. This is not for authors. These are reviews. That's that's all it is. Um, so, yeah, that being said, I really appreciate you getting out there and being honest with it. It means the world to me. And I think it means the world yeah, to the people who listen and watch week. us. Yeah, exactly. Somehow it did. <laughs> uh, that's a whole other story. But um, thank you so much. I appreciate this. Um, now, I, I just want to make sure before I move on here, that's the last of the goddamn catch me if whatever by me and Kale that you listen to this week, right? Only four, correct? Yes, only four. I, I wanted to take a break and have at least have something to listen to for next week. All right, we got it then. So good job. Uh, thanks for pulling everything down. Also, an extra special thanks to little Zach Johnson. Uh, thanks for sending over the audio. Yes, thank uh, you, I Zach. do appreciate it. Uh, we will see you all next week. Enjoy yourselves. Have fun.